Man, it is stupid hot out here. 99 degrees. Or maybe we're just stupid for being in some place that's so hot. We're supposed to be following the 70 degree weather. Welcome to Tigner Adventures. And as the intro said, it is hot. Yep. We are in uh, Warner Robins, Georgia, and we are, uh, this is June 18th, and we are right in the middle of the summer, and we think it's hot today, but it's going to get up to 99 today. Well, guess what? Next week, we are in this hot spree. It's supposed to be 104 to 106 next week, so. With humidity. With the humidity, yeah. Today, mm -hmm. humidity is down, though. It's only like 34%, so it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, that's why we're outside. Yeah, that's why we're outside <laughs> right now. But um, I'll tell you, um, the thing that uh, we love that we have done to our RV, the one remodel that we've done that we really love is our um, mini here. split. And so, <laughs> what? Especially why we're here. Yeah, especially why we're here. So the AC unit that we have is called a mini split. And today I want to talk about some things that you should know about a mini split AC unit if you want to actually put one in yourself. The first thing you need to know is that the mini split is actually made up of two different parts. So this is the head unit and this unit is mounted in our um, rig above our door. And, uh, and then the second piece of the uh, mini split is actually mounted out where our generator used to be. And you can see that here. Now, if you look at this video, this was the video that we actually had uh, that we made um, about the install of our mini split. And so you can see all the details, what we went through and how we actually did it and, and had it planned out. And I have to tell you though, it's been working really, really good. Um, again, we're in Warner Robins, Georgia. We're visiting our daughter. And so because we're visiting family, we don't have the uh, luxury of going up in the mountain where it's 70 degrees. We are actually um, down here in Warner Robins and it's uh, 90, it's supposed to be 99 today. Um, our rig stays right around. We have it set at uh, 76 degrees and it stays pretty darn close to that all day long. So it's a pretty nice little unit, but you gotta just understand it's made up of two different pieces that you've gotta figure out where you're going to put those pieces if you're going to actually install a mini split. Oh, and one extra piece that we have added to uh, this is this device from Celo that actually allows us to control the uh, mini split from anywhere uh, that we might be, uh, just from our phone. So we can, if we need to, we can turn it on, we can turn it off, or we can change the temperature accordingly to kind of keep an eye on, you know, what it's like for Tansy when she's um, by herself. The second thing that you need to understand is because it's mounted here in the rig, in this one spot, all right, um, it uh, gets nice and cold in the main area here but the rest of the rig doesn't necessarily, you know, the fan's not blowing the air back into those units. It's not like our old um, air conditioner that was mounted on the roof that um, used the duct work up in the ceiling to blow air in different areas of the motorhome. So you need to understand that this is more of a radiant cold, so it radiates throughout the rig, and depending on how hot it gets, especially in the back bedroom area, that, when that's in the direct sunlight, that does get warmer than what it is here in the living area. And, and so to uh, help compensate that, we use fans to kind of move the air around a little bit. And if you look here, we have replaced our AC unit with these Max Air fans. And we actually have three Max Air fans, one in the front, one in the back, and where the AC used to be, and then one in the bathroom. And we have those set on the lid is closed, but the fans are moving, and so it's moving the air around in the rig. And so be, with that, it helps radiate that coldness back and forth, and so it does a pretty decent job. And with the temperatures here getting up to the 99s, and this next week will be in the 100s, um, the rig stays pretty much where we have it set, at 76 degrees. And so it doesn't matter where on our old system, it never did much better than like 10 degrees, even with all the duct work. Okay, so, so that works out pretty good. 
but you just got to understand that wherever you put it that room is going to be colder than most of the rest of your rig and then the third thing you need to understand is power now this mini split uses very little power compared to our old AC unit the AC units that were on our roof uh, would typically draw pretty darn close to 18 amps and some 17 to 18 amps of power when it was running and uh, it didn't matter you know how hot it was outside or anything it always drew about 17 amps to 18 amps now with the mini split it actually the amperage goes up and down so depending on how much it's running um, as far as you know how cold it has to get it um, it's running anywhere from less than an amp you know maybe just the fan is just uh, blowing air around a little bit um, all the way up to if I put it into turbo mode I could be as high as maybe 10 amps 9 to 10 amps somewhere in there um, and so uh, but in just regular operating mode it typically is using about 7 amps on my meter which that's everything that my rig's using so overall this is supposed to be using about 6 amps of power um, on a normal usage type setup now when I flip it to turbo it goes up by a few amps because the fans go up to high speed it actually sets the unit down to 64 degrees so it's trying to cool the, the, uh, ace, the um, motor home down faster and so it uses more power in that situation so the fact that the mini split pulls very very little power allows us to do a lot more than you could especially like if you're mooch docking and you had the old AC units you for for the most part you could hardly even run that AC unit um, off of a 110 plug let alone trying to run your microwave at the same time so that is really nice and that's something you need to understand about the mini splits so the fourth thing you've got to know about a mini split is that there's two different versions of a mini split and the mini splits are based on either 110 voltage or 220 voltage now a standard home has 220 service going to it. A, a motorhome or RV or trailer, or any RVs, all the voltage going to the actual RV is 110 voltage. Okay, so because we only can have 110 voltage here, we have to pay attention to which version of mini split that we get to make sure that it's a 110 version um, of uh, power. Otherwise, it won't work. And so if you look here on this Amazon page I've got up here, this is the mini split that I bought. And um, I bought a 12,000 BTU unit. Uh, you can buy um, a 9,000 or 12,000 in a 110 uh, volt version. So, you know, you need to just look at that when you're actually looking at which ones to buy. Now, if you watch the video that I uh, did on the install, um, I mentioned that I bought my mini split at Home Depot and also mention that I would never ever do that again and so that's why I'm showing you this listing within Amazon and it's actually in my description if you want to go look at it but um, Home Depot they take their money out right when you make the order and then they held that for two months and at one point I had fifteen hundred dollars invested in this and I still uh, my unit still wasn't even being delivered to me so uh, they just say oh it's been shipped it's been shipped and then it would just never move and it's like what is going on and then there was no one there to help you so the, it, they wouldn't let me cancel it until they actually physically received it now with Amazon that isn't the case you know they don't bill you until it's actually shipped and you can cancel the order anytime and so you know if they're not holding up their end of the deal then you can cancel so I thought it would be good to have the local support of Home Depot but then after it was all said and done, there was nobody at Home Depot that knew anything and could help me. I mean, the customer service was absolutely bad. So that's why I'm listing this here. All right, and then the fifth thing that you need to understand is service. So most heating and air conditioning places deal with home heating units. And most RV <laughs> uh, service places deal with RV you know air conditioning service they they don't know how to deal with a mini split and most of the home people don't know how to deal with a mini split the reason for this is mini splits are very popular everywhere except for the US 
uh, to the U.S., it's kind of a brand new thing coming about. And so a lot of people don't really understand how they work. And so you got to be careful when you are talking to an AC guy that you find one that actually does anything with uh, mini splits, has the tools to actually work on a mini split because the the valve is a little different size and things like that. And they just need to understand how they actually work. And there are you know good service places out there that can do that. Uh, you just have to be aware of it and and uh, you know call the right people if you need help or whatever. Now I'm going to be putting together a uh, the, my next video is actually going to be on how to charge you know put uh, Freon into the mini split and how to uh, make sure that whatever you have in there is the right size because if you remember I put a longer line on than what was um, what it initially came with and so I'm um, you know one of the things we had to do once we got here to Warner Robins is I checked that and it was low and and so I needed to actually add Freon and so I'm gonna show you that video on how to do that and how to check it and how to do whatever your manufacturer says that you should be so that you know watch for that video and now for the bonus the bonus question out about this whole thing is one of the really cool things about a mini split and why they are starting to become more and more popular here in the US is that not only can it be an air conditioner, all right, it also is a heater. And that's pretty cool. It can do both jobs. So just by putting this into uh, your unit, you can heat or cool it. It becomes a heat pump is what the heating portion is. And how that works is there is a valve that's out by the actual compressor or in the compressor itself uh, unit that um, the Freon goes a certain way when it's air conditioning and so it creates all the heat all the heat is pulled out of the room here and blown out outside all right when you say I want to be a heater now what it does is it flips that valve and it runs the Freon the opposite direction and so what happens now is that um, it's pulling all the heat from outside and it's blowing it inside is kind of basically the whole idea of a heat pump even though it's really cold outside there's still heat outside and so now it's generating heat inside and the thing you just need to be understanding about it is that this is it's just like the air conditioner it's a radiant type heat so it's going to be a lot hotter in this room in our main area of our motorhome but with the fans and things moving things around it will you know go to different areas of the motorhome so but this room will be a lot hotter than other rooms and so you just need to understand that and you also need to understand that there are a little bit different um, amperage when it's in the heat mode not much but it is um, generating a lot or you know it's using some more uh, power and you need to just understand you know what that power is for the unit that you actually buy um, in our case we try to not be in places that are cold uh, but last year if you go back to this video when I was replacing or working on our heater our actual we, we typically heat our unit with a propane heater and that's what we heat our unit with but in that video I was talking about how our propane um, heater wasn't working and so we were using this um, to heat our unit and we were just having to run our generator because we happened to be up in the forest and had pretty much no um, um, solar and so we were just running off the generator but you know again the generator it's only a little little portable generator I it's only does 1800 watts and so it's just a little Honda style generator uh, it's an AI one that I bought from Sam's Club and it will put out 1800 watts so this was just running off of our inverter which run running off of our batteries and then we had our battery charger plugged into the generator and so that's how we were um, running it and it worked great so it's very handy to have this um, option available to you whenever you want to use it and if you don't have uh, propane heat maybe this is the only thing you have and that's all you need so that is a really big benefit of the mini split so I hope that this has been helpful and this these few tips will help you in deciding if you want to uh, have a mini split if you look back at my installation video there was a few things that I, I had to really struggle with you know and but to be honest with you now that I've done it it's really not that hard to actually put one in your unit and it works so much better than our roof ACs and you can see I mean it's blowing pretty cold air right now 
I don't even think you probably can even hear it. I can just barely hear the fan running. I can feel the cold air blowing out here and the little levers going up and down keeps the air movement going. So, you know, it's really nice and quiet compared to our old uh, rooftop AC unit. So anyway, hope this has been of help to you. Um, stay tuned for the next video, which we'll talk about how to do some maintenance on the, on, on the whole unit. Uh, but until then, we'll just uh, keep hanging out here in the hot temperatures and uh, we'll see if we can't uh, get done here. We're gonna actually be in Warner Robins for about another month. Uh, we have to uh, hang around to help out our daughter and son-in-law. And we're going to, uh, as soon as that's done, then we're gonna be back on our trip and we've got some pretty exciting things planned. So, so hang around and uh, we'll see you down the road. And if not, then hopefully it'll be on our next video. So take care. Mm -hmm.